Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're gonna talk about the unit circle. We're going to take information from the previous few videos. So if you haven't watched those videos, it, you know, it might be a good idea to do that, especially if you get lost in what I'm doing today. But we're gonna talk about what the unit circle is, and I want to first of all review the sine of the cosine function and the sine function in the various quadrants. So in quadrant one, both sine and cos are positive. In quadrant two, sine is positive, cos is negative. In quadrant three, sine is negative and cos is negative. And in quadrant four, sine is negative, cos is positive. And, and the way you remember that is basically sine will be positive wherever y is positive. Similarly, cos will be positive wherever x is positive. So we're going to look at a unit circle. So I'm gonna center that circle at the origin. And by unit circle, I mean it has a radius of one. Well, if my radius is one, my x value is one here, my y value is zero. So this is at, and I'm gonna work in radians. So this is zero radians. This is 90 degrees, which is pi over two radians. And here, the x value is zero, the y value is one. This is pi radians. So the x and y coordinates here, x is negative one, y is zero. And this is three pi over two radians, so 270 degrees. My x coordinate is zero and my y coordinate is negative one. In the last video, we found that the sine of 45 degrees, which is pi over four radians, is root two over two. We also found that the cos of pi over four radians is root two over two. So I showed that in the last video, I'm not gonna show how we obtained that. But I want to talk about that now in terms of some other angles related to pi over 4. If I were to take a point on my unit circle, the radius is 1. So this length here would be x. This length here would be y. My coordinate, coordinates for that point are x and y. So in order to express my sine and cosine of any angle theta, so sine of theta, it will be opposite over hypotenuse. So it will just be y. Cos of theta will be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is one, so it would be x. So my coordinate for x is going to be the same as cos of theta. My coordinate of y is going to be the same as sine of theta. Therefore, when we see and when we put our coordinates on our unit circle, the first coordinate is the x, which is equivalent to the cos of theta. And the second coordinate is y, which is equivalent to the sine of theta. So let's talk in uh, particular with our angle of pi over 4. If that's our angle theta, then our coordinates will be the cos, fine, uh, cos of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, and the sine is root 2 over 2. Okay, so you'll see those coordinates on a unit circle for an angle of pi over 4 radians. Now, Pi over four radians is like a reference angle for some other angles, but in the other quadrants. For example, if I looked at this angle here, which is if the rotation from the horizontal was pi over four, so this angle here, I could describe as pi minus pi over four. I need a common denominator, so that would be four pi over four minus pi over four. So 4 pi minus pi over 4, which would be 3 pi over 4. So this angle here 
It's 3 pi over 4. I'm going to write the angle close to the point rather than it's going to get confusing if I put all of my angles here. So I'll just write pi over 4 here as well. This point will have coordinates that are the same as this, but there's going to be a difference in the, the positive or negative sign of them. So if we take a look at this, sine will be positive, so it's going to be the same sine value or y coordinate, root 2 over 2. And cos is negative, so it's going to be negative root 2 over 2. If we then look at an angle that has a rotation of pi over 4 from this axis, so in other words, pi plus pi over 4, that's going to be 4 pi over 4 plus pi over 4, which will be 5 pi over 4. It's going to have the same numerical values for the ratios, but in quadrant 3, they're both going to be negative. So negative root 2 over 2 and negative root 2 over 2 are the x and the y coordinates, or the cos and the sine of this angle. Lastly, if we look in quadrant 4, this angle in quadrant 4 will be pi over 4 radians short of 2 pi. So 2 pi minus pi over 4 will be equivalent to 8 pi over 4 minus pi over 4, which is 7 pi over 4. So this angle in radians is 7 pi over 4. And we know the numerical values of our sine and cosine, but cos is positive, this represents cos, sine is negative. So if you understand where these functions are positive, negative, and if you understand where these, num these ratios came from, then you've got the sine and cosine functions for four different angles in your unit circle. That deals with our 45 degree or pi over 4 radian special angle. We also have 30 degrees and we also have 60 degrees. So let's take a look next at 30 degrees or pi over 6 radians. In the last video we talked about what the sine and cosine of pi over 6 radians was in terms of exact values. So those are these, this will be my x coordinate, this will be my y coordinate for all of the angles that have a 30 degree rotation from the horizontal, a pi over 6 radian rotation from the horizontal. So in quadrant 1, we're going to have pi over 6. We know both sine and cosine are positive, so remember instead of x and y, it's going to be cos of theta, sine of theta. So cos is root 3 over 2, and sine is 1 half. If we look in quadrant 2, we have a rotation of pi over 6 from the horizontal. Remember, this is pi. So if I'm trying to find this angle, I know that it is, if I take a rotation of pi over 6 from the horizontal, and the horizontal is pi, radians, and I take away pi over 6 radians to get this angle. That's going to be 6 pi over 6 minus 1 pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 6. My coordinates will be exactly the same, except that in quadrant 2, my first, my cos will be negative, my x will be negative. And y, or sine of 5 pi over 6, will be positive. If I look in quadrant 3, the angle will be pi plus that amount of rotation from the horizontal. So pi plus pi over 6. 
6 pi over 6 plus 1 pi over 6 will be 7 pi over 6. In quadrant 3, both x and y are negative, therefore both sine and cosine are negative. So it will be negative root 3 over 2, negative 1 over 2. And in quadrant 4, if this amount of rotation from the horizontal is pi over 6, and we're dealing with 2 pi radians here, so 2 pi minus pi over 6, will be 12 pi over 6 minus 1 pi over 6, which will be 11 pi over 6. In quadrant 4, my x-coordinate is positive, and my y-coordinate is negative. So there's all of the values for my sine and cosine of, for those four angles. Let's take a look at the values of the angles when we work with a reference angle of 60 degrees, which is pi over 3 radians. So if we look at a rotation from our positive x-axis of 60 degrees, that's equivalent to pi over 3 radians. We learned in the last video what the sine of pi over 3 radians was equivalent to and what the cos of pi over 3 radians was equal to. So therefore, my coordinates will be the cos of pi over 3, which is 1 half, and y, which is the sine of pi over 3, which is root 3 over 2. In quadrant 2, that rotation of 60 degrees from this horizontal would give us an angle of pi minus we're working in radians, and so instead of 60 degrees, we're doing pi over 3. So that's 3 pi over 3 minus 1 pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 3. So that's my angle. And the coordinates will be these coordinates, but x will be negative. So negative 1 half root 3 over 2. In quadrant 3, We're taking um, our horizontal and adding a rotation of pi over 3. So pi plus pi over 3 will be 3 pi over 3 plus 1 pi over 3 is 4 pi over 3. And in quadrant 3, both the x and the y are negative. In quadrant 4, a rotation of 60 degrees from the horizontal would be obtained if we took 2 pi and subtracted pi over 3 radians. That will be 6 pi over 3 minus 1 pi over 3 is 5 pi over 3. And in quadrant 4, the x or the cos function will be positive and the y or the sine function will be negative. So there's the values of those special angles in all of the four quadrants. We take all of this for the different angles that we've looked at and put them together to get your complete unit circle. I'm going to draw it, <laughs> but um, it's probably best if you were to find it online somewhere and, and print a nice copy of that to refer to. So what I've done here is I've taken those special angles that I did individually and I've put them all together. I've put the pi over six angles in red. I've put the pi over four angles in black and the pi over three angles in blue. We also have the coordinates for the axes. But as I mentioned, um, either make your own unit circle or find a nice copy um, online. Take care, and we'll see you on the next video.